Battle for Greyport is a game set in the universe of the Red Dragon Inn, a game that incidentally I, I haven't played, or it must have been so long ago and I mean, it was tight, I don't remember, I don't think I played it. Uh, but this one, I read that it was cooperative and deck building, two things that I like very much and so I decided to try. This game comes with several scenarios in which uh, each time you will have three rounds and you will have to defeat waves of monsters with the purpose of ultimately defeating a big boss in round three. Now, deck building I said, so as you can expect there will be an area where you will purchase cards, you're gonna have a deck with items and a deck with heroes that you will add to your uh, to your deck. Interesting enough, uh, you're gonna have uh, coins of different denominations uh, that will be used to buy those cards, understandably. The peculiar thing is that you get a specific amount and composition of coins uh, at the beginning of each round and you must, yes, you must buy a card each turn. So your deck will increase by exactly one card each, each turn. Then we have uh, all the bad stuff that the evil villains are trying to do to us. We have a card that introduces the scenario and then we have three cards that teach you how to set up each round. And once you do the stuff indicated here, say giving coins to players, uh, then you take the card and you slide it under a location precisely like I did so, because each scenario uh, each round also takes place in a specific location. And so you slide the setup for the round under the location so that only the bottom line is visible uh, because that indicates the penalty that the players have to pay if the location is destroyed. And there will be a certain number of monsters that will be next to the location and they will attack the location reducing its uh, its strength. Uh, different scenarios will have different decks of monsters as indicated by the uh, symbol at the bottom. And then, uh, well, each player also has some monsters that are already there to keep them company. Say, if I'm playing as Fiona, uh, in this scenario I start with two monsters next to me already, annoying me and being ready to attack me. Each uh, player's hero will have a number of life points. If you lose all of the life points, you're dead. And if a hero dies, uh, the entire group dies. So these are this is <laughs> victory slash defeat conditions. A hero dies at any time, the group loses. If you defeat the monster, the final boss at the end of round three, the group wins. Each uh, character has a level card, there is one for each round, so you level up automatically and you will have different abilities each round. And it's larger than the regular cards that you place in your deck, but still goes in your hand. So that kind of looks like, like this, a bit weird. And then you have your starting deck and you will draw cards from it, add them to your large card. And these cards represent heroes and items. As you can see, there are basically two types, two flavors. Melee heroes and weapons, and magic heroes and weapons. The way it works, during a round, the players can play quite freely, say at the same time, say I play a card, you play another card, and so that's uh, that's part of the experience. One player, however, will be the first player, or I should say the active player, the player will receive this token, which also is a reminder that once per turn the active player can taunt a monster, so attracting a monster from somewhere else to go visit them, hang out together, so much fun. So that's what the active player does. Also the monsters next to the active player are, understandably enough, the active monsters. Then as I said, players can uh, play cards quite freely, or can they? Because while they can play them in any order, there are pretty strict restrictions on what you can play each turn. For example, in a turn, I can play a single hero. That's it. Doesn't matter how many I have in my hand, I can play one per turn. Unless there are rules that let you break the rule, but that's uh, that, that we know that's typical of deck building games. There are going to be effects that are specific. So one hero per turn. Also, you can uh, play one item one item per hero. So in many cases, it will be one item per turn. 
then I can attack an active monster. Uh, but again, if I played only one hero with one item, then chances are I only have one attack per turn. When you attack, each hero can attack only once per turn also. When I attack, I uh, ex exhaust, I spend the the card, turn them by 90 degrees to indicate that the hero possibly with the item already attacked and the hero inflicts the number of damage indicated there. This one for example would inflict uh, two points of damage. If I play this on Fiona, now actually Fiona rolls a yellow die and we got different dice with different uh, ranges of numbers on them. And so if this is the attack, then I roll a yellow die plus one, and that's how much damage I give to one of the active to one of the active monsters. Um, that's it. Meaning that's that's pretty much it for the active for the uh, for the round. Again, you play cards, but it's only one hero. One item, one attack per hero, so probably means one attack per round, and the active player only can taunt. I lost the taunt token, but do you remember it wasn't long ago? Taunt. Then you had the cleanup phase, which is fairly elaborate, I would say. Uh, the monsters uh, that are still next to the location attack the location. You need to do cleanup for all players, discarding play cards. The uh, active, the player with this token, only must buy a card from the market and add it to their, to their, um, to their hand. That's unusual, to their hand, not to the discard pile. The active player only also will refill their hand, which is again unusual. As part of the management, you have to know that if you're playing cards while somebody else is the active player, uh, you will not refill your hand right away and then you pass the run marker to the left. This is the idea, this is how you play Battle for Greyport and you continue like this, building your deck, attacking, playing heroes and items and attacking monsters until either a hero loses, is killed, and then all players lose the game, or until you defeat the final boss for the scenario, in which case the group wins the game. Well, I cannot say that I am a fan of this game. Uh, the art is super cute. I like it, I like it a lot. And I, I, I thought that the idea of a cooperative deck building game, while not new, uh, was very promising. It's, I like cooperative, I like the building games. Um, we have seen it before, in particular we had Thunderstone, a version of Thunderstone maybe 10 years ago, uh, which may be one of the first games that did the cooperative deck building thing. And here when you see the common theme of fantasy adventuring and slaying monsters, I thought, that's pretty cool, it looks like a simplified, maybe lighter version of Thunderstone uh, Advance, um, which in a sense it is, but maybe too much, <laughs> and so, when I was hoping for a simpler copy of Thunderstone, I ended up having the feeling that this was kind of like Munchkin the Munchkin the deck building game, which for some of you may be really great. I know Munchkin is, has been has become a modern classic. I don't particularly enjoy it, but it felt that way. It felt too light for me. But mind you, I don't like my light. I don't mind light games. But the problem that I had here is that I felt that there's just so much going on around the game and the setup and set up each scenario, set up each round go through all of the steps each turn, all the things, remember, okay, you're the active player, and so you can do certain things, I can only do other things, those are the active monsters, etc, etc, etc. It just feels like fiddly logistically, when comp not per se, but when compared to what then you actually do, which is, well, this round I'm gonna play a hero. That may just be it, because maybe you have a handle of heroes and people don't have game effects that can help you. Um, there's just a lot going on around a design that, again, if you are lucky, by default, you're going to play one hero, play one item, and do one attack. Um, too much work to get there. And ultimately, that also means that gameplay is pretty repetitive, because this turn I'm going to play a hero with uh, a plus one uh, uh, sword. The next time I'm going to play a magical hero with... Uh, another little item that does another little thing. 
And so gameplay feels repetitive over and over again. Now in the later rounds, you're likely to have added stuff to your deck that will make things a little more varied. So, oh, now I can give you a cleave ability. I can give you that ability. You can play an extra hero. Um, but gameplay remains so basic that I don't know that doing the same things more times per round in later per turn in later rounds really improves it or just makes it uh, slower. So, not for me, uh, not for my group. But uh, if you're looking for a very simple, a very simple deck building game, hey, you know what? Uh, this came out, if this came out maybe eight years ago when my kids were young, uh, I think this could have been a perfectly viable uh, family game. That could have been their introduction to um, uh, to deck building. Then the idea of like, hey kids, let's go and slay some monsters when mommy's not here because, uh, you know, she may or may not like the violence of it. Um, but that may have worked. So actually it may work as a family game. I think the target also is very casual gamers or non-gamers. Again, if this is somebody's first deck building game, they may be blown away and become gamers for life. But uh, if you already are a hobby player, if you play strategy games regularly, this feels a little too light and also a little too repetitive and complicated for what it is, at least in my opinion and assessment.